Now, what does the Quran tell us about God? You have to realize I'm just about through with the Quran here in my first time reading it. And now I was really caught. I searched my head. What does the Quran tell us about God? It tells us nothing could be compared to him. That is out anything, he's outside anything that we may compare to. That our definitions do not encompass him. That our reason cannot comprehend him. That he is transcendent and we are finite. That he is a more, he, he is, un, uh, he transcends time and space and we are bound by it. That he is immortal, we are mortal. He is uncorporeal, we are corporeal. That we have no way of comparing ourselves to him. Nothing could be compared to him. I thought, oh my God, I'm so close and yet so far. Because I'll never understand the essential link between us and God and why these three things fit into place. Because the Quran tells us that we will, could never really quite understand God. Or at least that's the way I thought. And so I put down the Quran when I had finished it. And much to my dismay, I was honestly disappointed because I thought I'm just, the author made a brilliant, 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 brilliant try, but he never quite made it. <clears throat> and so I was sitting in front of, about three, four weeks later, I was sitting in Diamond Heights in my apartment watching a football game, I think it was. And you know, sometimes just things just slip into your minds when you least expect them, and I'm sitting there watching it, and all of a sudden into my mind came a thought, and I said, wait a minute, the Quran does tell us so much about God. It tells us again and again and again, but somehow I just missed it. Just skimmed over it every single time. Because if you turn to almost any page, if you turn to the beginning of any surah, you could see time and time again essential information about God that I just thought was sort of a literary device, something to make it just sound more beautiful. Because if you turn to the beginning of any surah, you'll see the words Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. If you read almost any passage, long passage, when you come to the end of it, it's punctuated by dual attributive statements like God is the merciful, the compassionate. God is the forgiving, the gentle. God is the kind, the protector. God is the generous, the truthful. God is, and so forth and so on. There are tens of thousands of such references in the statements in the Quran. What the Quran defines as God's most beautiful names, his attributes of perfection, repeated again and again and again on almost every page. And as I sat there, sitting by the television, I started to jot them down in my, you know, on my little piece of notebook there. Same notebook I used to jot these down before. And I began to list from my own mind the attributes of perfection as I remembered them. And they were, we should be, God is the compassion. God is the mercy. God is the forgiving. God is the just, the protector, the defender of the oppressed and the weak, the knowing, the wise, the generous, the kind, the truthful, the loving, the peaceful, the source of all peace, the truth, and so forth and so on. Every item I had listed it in my list for the qualities that we human beings are supposed to develop, the Quran was telling me had its infinite source and perfection in Allah, in God. And then all of a sudden, all the pieces fell together. Then I suddenly saw it, as I see most of you probably see as well. That now, I mean, suddenly it all began to make sense to me. In what way do I say that? Well. It was now obvious why we had to develop these qualities. It was, no, it was now obvious how these things on the floor here fell into place. And I'll just say it clearly, 